All right, let's talk about elasticities. So all elasticities are trying to measure how responsive consumption or production decisions are to some change in the model, right? Whether that's price or income or something else. We're going to start here with the price elasticity of demand, but it's good to keep that in mind that we're really trying to understand how responsive our consumers and producers are. Price elasticity of demand in particular measures how responsive consumption is to changes in price. And we do that by taking the ratio of the change in quantity demanded to the change in the price. A lot of times the meaning of this gets lost in the calculation, right? Because in order to actually do this calculation, we've got to rearrange the equation and it makes less sense that way, intuitively. But really all we're trying to do is figure out how big is the quantity change relative to the price change. Now, as I mentioned, in order to actually calculate elasticity, we'll rearrange that. In your intro class, you maybe had midpoint formula or a point elasticity in my class using slope or calculating the percent changes. But in this class, we're going to do that using a derivative. So here, what you have, this is really the derivative of the demand function with respect to price. And that makes our calculations a bit easier, particularly compared to the midpoint formula, but um, don't let the calculation part get in the way of your intuition. When we're talking about elastic demand, what we mean is that consumers respond a lot to price changes. In other words, this numerator is big. People change their consumption a lot when the price changes. So we say that we have elastic demand when our percent change in quantity is bigger than our percent change in price, making that ratio bigger than one. And when that happens, it tells me something about total revenue, not just about consumers, but it also tells me something about total revenue along the demand curve. And that is that when we have elastic demand, price and total revenue are going to move in opposite directions. So if you increase your price, it's going to make people buy a lot less of your product and you're going to earn overall less money. The opposite is when we have inelastic demand, meaning that consumers are not very flexible and that's how we refer to demand uh, when this ratio is less than one. In other words, when the percent change in quantity is less than, smaller than that percent change in price. It is worth noting that the price elasticity of demand is actually always going to be negative because when price goes up, quantity goes down and vice versa. Um, so when I'm talking about the size of these changes, we really mean in magnitude and we don't care about the sign. So when we have inelastic demand, a change in price will not change consumption very much. And that means that price and total revenue will move in the same direction. So for example, if you increase the price of your product, people will buy less, but not very much. So overall, you're going to earn more money. It's useful to think about price elasticities of demand, not just when you're a business thinking about whether or not to have a sale, but also if you're trying to formulate public policy. So we'll come back to elasticities when we talk about demand in a future lecture. So the last option here is when demand is unit elastic, when it's equal to one. And this happens uh, for linear demand curves at the midpoint of the demand curve. Uh, but it's a, it's a unique point in that this is the point where total revenue is maximized. And so I want to talk just a little bit more about this relationship between demand and total revenue. So we've got this graph here of kind of a generic straight line demand curve. So we'll say this is some demand curve P equals A minus BQ. 
could be anything. Well, the intercept here on the y-axis would be A. The intercept on the x-axis would be, whoops, A over B. And you can see that all along the demand curve, each point has a different elasticity. Up here, it's elastic. Down here, it's inelastic. And in the middle, it's unit elastic. To understand why that is, we want to think about how to write our total revenue equation and how total revenue varies with quantity based on this demand curve. So remember, total revenue is equal to price times quantity. But of course, price and quantity are related through the demand curve. So really, in order to understand total revenue, we've got to combine it with what we know about demand. And if I plug that in, I can now write total revenue just as a function of quantity. And that's the graph I have down here. I, when quantity is zero, obviously you earn no money. Price is zero, you're also gonna earn no money, and then there's some point in the middle that is the maximum total revenue point. And now in order to find the maximum total revenue point, I'm gonna draw back on our calculus review and remember that this point will have a slope that is equal to zero, right? And so at this point, the slope of total revenue, which is marginal revenue, will equal zero. So we can figure out where this point is now using calculus. Um, we can just take total revenue, find marginal revenue by finding the derivative with respect to quantity. That's gonna be A minus two BQ. And you're probably used to showing that on the graph with the demand curve, right? Starts at the same intercept as the demand curve. It's got twice the slope. So it's gonna go to zero here at this point. Half of the x-intercept. And you can see that it goes to zero here at this point, right, based on this equation. We can also see that that is the point that maximizes total revenue by taking this marginal revenue function and setting it equal to zero. So if I set marginal revenue equal to zero, I get A minus 2BQ equals zero, and I can solve, and I get a quantity that is A over 2B. So I know that for any straight line demand curve, total revenue is maximized at the midpoint. That's why marginal revenue falls to zero at that point. It's telling me that Right up until the midpoint, the slope of my total revenue curve is positive, it's increasing, and after that it's negative, it's decreasing, and this is the maximum point right here.